So I had something a little bit crazy happen to me recently while I was camping in a national forest campground. I had to be escorted out of my spot by three police officers at 1.30 in the morning. I'll tell you all about it today. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I am doing great. But like I said, I had something a little bit crazy happen to me recently while I was camping. And, um, you know, I've been on the road for five years. And by far, this is the craziest thing that's happened to me the whole time. But I learned a couple of things from it. And so I wanted to share it with you today. Recently, I've been making my way across Wyoming, which I have absolutely loved. And while I was there, I was trying to find some new spots for my patrons because I share all of my personal camping locations on a map for them. And one of the things that I wanted to do was check out a lot of national forest campgrounds because this is the sweet spot right now where a lot of the national forest campgrounds are free because the camp host has been sent home by the concessionaire, but the forest service keeps them open until usually it snows in a lot of places. And so I just wanted to campground top and like, I stayed at several that were amazing, like this one that I stayed at that was about 45 minutes outside of a town. Really not that many other people were there. I was right next to a waterfall. There were lots of animals and it was great. But after that, I went through Grand Teton and came out on the other side at Jackson, Wyoming, and stayed at a campground 23 minutes right outside of town. And you've probably heard me say before, if you watch my channel, that I don't like to camp myself, usually within about 30 minutes of a town. I learned my first year on the road that that's where things get a little bit more dicey. In areas like that, you know, people live in the forest a lot who can't afford to live in the town, or, you know, people wanna be close to their drug dealers or they just wanna go out and party. And so in those types of areas, you'll see things like, you know, broken glass and bullets and graffiti. And on the weekends, people come out to party from the town. So I just try and avoid that. But this time I broke my rule. I pulled in and I got this choice spot right on a river. And it was like, there were fall colors. And I just wanted to sit there and read my book and enjoy the campsite. And then the next day I was planning to move on anyway. Well, that night I went out of my camper at about 10.30 at night to look at the stars. And normally I go out in the pitch black all the time to look at the stars and it, I'm comfortable with it and it's no big deal. But there had been a lot of bear activity around and in my campground. So before I went out, I wanted to flip on the lights to let anything that was out there know that I was coming out and not surprise it. So I was going down my steps and I turned on my porch light and immediately two gunshots rang out that sounded like they went right over my head. It was the loudest shot that I've ever heard outside of a gun range in my life. So I knew that it was very close by to me, definitely in the campground. So you guys can imagine, I turned off the lights and I jumped back inside and stood there in the dark. And I was thinking, okay, well, somebody in here shooting a gun. I don't hear a party. I don't hear anybody that's drunk. And it definitely seemed like it happened because I turned on the light. And then I thought, well, that's nuts. Why would somebody do that? So I just decided to stay there for a while and wait and see if anything else happened because there was absolutely zero cell signal inside of this campground. Well, I've been testing out Starlink recently. And so when the Starlink is on, I can use that to do Wi-Fi calling. I'm gonna tell you guys more about my experience with Starlink soon, it's a mixed bag. But one of the things that I don't like about it is that the router takes a ton of power to run. And so at night when my solar's not working, I have to turn that off. So I had no cell signal, I had no ability to call anybody, and worse yet, my Starlink was 150 feet, the full extension of the cord that comes with it, out through this thicket so I could put it on the edge of the river where I could get a signal because you can't get a signal usually if there's trees. So I'm tethered to the Starlink, which is not on. 
and I'm in this campground where there's no signal and somebody is shooting a gun. So I thought about it for a minute and I thought, okay, well, maybe it was a one-off, right? And then another shot rang out and you guys, I'm telling you, it sounded like it was outside my door. Um, and I thought, look, I'm probably the only person here that has the ability to call anybody. And so I'm going to do it. So I powered up the Starlink because you never know, right? I mean, it could have been a domestic. Um, it could have been a crazy person. So after the Starlink was booted up, I tried to call 911. It wouldn't go through. So I tried to call the local phone number for the police department in Jackson and they were closed. <laughs> so I called the local sheriff and this lady answered and she was great. And she said, look, it's Lincoln County that I need to call. Um, but I'm going to call them for you. So they'll come out. And I was waiting and another shot rang out. And this one sounded like it was inside my house, like crazy. And right after that, my phone rang and it was a guy from the sheriff's office that said, um, hi, ma'am. I understand that you're a little concerned that you heard some gunfire. Well, you do know it's hunting season, right? Look, this was 1130 at night by this time. So I said, look, dude, this is not a hunter. This is somebody shooting a gun inside the campground. And he said, okay, well, we've called Lincoln County. I mean, hopefully they come out. And he hung up. <laughs> so I had no idea if anybody was even going to come. So a few minutes after that, I see some headlights come into the campground. I could see the entrance a little bit through the trees. And this car was going slowly around the campground and stopping. And when I saw it, it didn't look like a police car. It could have been unmarked or it could have just been a drug dealer like making the rounds in there. I don't know. But the car pulled over. I thought if it's a cop, he's waiting for more shots to come. And then a few minutes later, like the whole Jackson Police Department came into my campground. I think there were like eight cops that came in total. And there were people in the woods next to me with flashlights. And I thought, oh my God, something really happened. I don't know what's going on. I can't see anything. But then more cops come down right next to me. And then a sheriff pulls up right next to my camper and looks up like, is she in there? And so I put on a hat and I came outside and I said, hi, do you need to talk to me? And he goes, are you Robin? And I said, yeah. And he said, look, we don't usually like to alert other people about who called. But as soon as we came in the campground, other campers were running out at the police cars to wave us down to tell us somebody was shooting a gun in here. And then the cop asked me if I knew where the shots came from. And I said, look, I can't tell you for sure because we're in a loop in the woods in the dark. And it seemed like the shots came from the left of me, definitely close to me, but I couldn't tell him for sure. And he said, well, the other campers weren't able to tell us either, but we're pretty sure it was the people right next to you. My partner is over there now. We're familiar with them. They work in town. So right away, I knew which campsite he was talking about because when I first got to the campground, I actually checked out a spot right across from these people, but I just didn't want to be across from them. I just had a weird vibe. It didn't look like anything crazy. I mean, the campground was reasonable. There was an old camper on it, but beyond that, which you can't see in the dash cam footage was that there were a couple of big tents out there. Like a lot of people should have been there, but nobody was there. So I moved and I went to the spot next to it on the river. And those are the people they think were shooting the gun. And then the cop said, well, here's the problem. If nobody can tell us for sure it was them, we can't ask them to leave. And then he just looked at me and I said, well, normally I would leave. I would have been out of here. The problem is that I am tethered to this Starlink that literally the cord goes out of the back of my car and through the woods. And I didn't get a shot of that at this spot, but here's a shot of what the Starlink normally looks like away from the car. So it's not like I could just jump in the driver's seat and go. So if anybody out there is considering Starlink, this is something to consider. It's not like a travel router that's inside your house where it's just easy to go. You are tethered to a piece of equipment outside your rig. So by this point, a couple of other officers had left their big group and come over. So I was standing with three cops at my campsite at 1230 in the morning. And that's when I explained that when I first went out, it kind of felt like 
I turned on my porch light and that's when the shots were fired. And the cop looked at me and went, so by this point, I had a pretty good idea what the cops were thinking about the people next to me. And then they looked at me and said, would you like to go? And I said, yes, I would definitely like to go. I just need to pack up my stuff. One of the cops said, do you need a flashlight to get the Starlink? And I said, yes, thank you. I didn't even have to run inside. And then one of them asked me if that was my chair down by the river. I had completely forgotten that my chair and my little fireplace were down there. So after I was all packed up, we just stood out behind my camper and shot the shit for a while. And I told them that I was really impressed by the response about how many officers had come into the campground. And they said, oh, oh no, there's a hunter that fell off the cliff across the highway from me and that he was on some precipice there and he had some broken bones and that somebody was rappelling down to help the hunter and that a lot of police officers were just outside of my campground on the highway waiting to shut the highway down if a helicopter had to come. And that's why when this, the call came in that there were shots fired, so many of them came in. Everything was good. They were great. I was going to leave those neighbors. And all of us pulled out of my campsite. And then when we started to get towards the entrance, I was like, I have no idea where I'm going. I don't know if I should turn left or turn right. So I pulled over near the entrance to the campground just to check my map. And then, you know, all the cops went by. And as they did, I, I waved at them. And luckily, on my own travel map, I had a scenic overlook about an hour and a half down the road. So I turned that way. I went there and then I woke up there the next morning and um, was glad that I had left that spot. So everything ended up just fine. And if you're wondering, this doesn't dissuade me from being a nomad or camping at all. I see a lot less drama and a lot less crazy out on the road than I did when I lived in the sticks and bricks. So if anyone out there is worried, I say just be smart. Don't stay within 30 minutes of a town. Be ready to pack up quickly if you have a problem and then just keep it moving. That's what I did. I'll see you guys again soon. Until then, everybody have happy travels and be free.